Hey, welcome back to DIY Willie. Today's video, well, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I have some computer uh, content for today. I know it's not my usual cars or engines or, or, or something along those lines, but it's something I needed to do or it's something that I wanted to do. And uh, yeah, uh, let me show you what I'm doing. So when I started my channel, I started on this Acer laptop computer and it's a let's see it's a i5 42110U 17 gigahertz with turbo boost to 2.7 gigahertz with Intel processor or Intel graphics 4400 uh, had 8 gigabytes of memory and a 1 terabyte hard drive you can get a closer look Anyway, I made probably the first year of videos on this and it worked great. It did everything I needed to. It was a little frustrating because sometimes I would forget to plug the power supply in and the battery would go dead and it wouldn't give me a warning on the screen. And I would sometimes lose all the work that I had done in the edit. So uh, it got frustrating with that. I wound up sometimes just leaving it plugged in, uh, sometimes a uh, family member would unplug it from the wall even though it was plugged in here it wasn't plugged in at the wall and it would still go dead so i wanted something more reliable something that would uh, uh have a, a larger power supply it would not be so dependent on being plugged in uh more upgradable i'm not saying this isn't upgradable but this is pretty much what you get you can do the memory usually maybe a hard drive but it's, it is what it is so i wanted something more but still remaining on a budget because uh, DIY Willie doesn't have a big budget. So my next adventure was a Dell Optiplex 7020. This is an i7 processor with 32 gigabytes of memory. It has a 240 gigabyte SSD drive and a one terabyte hard drive. I uh, picked this up off of Amazon. Um, it's a refurbished machine. It, uh, I've been doing all the videos the last uh, year or two and a half years with this machine. And uh, I have no problem with it. I did install a different graphics card. Right now, this thing is using an AMD RX 550 graphics card. The graphics card that was in it uh, wasn't sufficient for when I started just using... Uh, uh, more options with my software. I use uh, DaVinci Resolve as my editing software and uh, well I had to I had to uh, upgrade the, the graphics card to be able to support what I wanted to do and in doing that I also upgraded the power supply and uh, there's a the graphics card down there so this is an AMD RX 550 so and this is a 500 or 500 watt uh, power supply and it, it works fine everything is good um, I added an extra fan inside which you'll see in a few minutes and uh, uh, it works it's probably really dusty inside but uh, we'll get the we'll get the side cover off and take a look because we've got to take everything out of the air and put it in the new one so let's look at some of the parts for the new one here's my new case this is a Fractal uh, Focus G case. Um, I chose this case because it's one of the cases I could find that still had an IO drive slot or CD-ROM slot. Uh, I still keep my, my CD-ROM from the Dell right here. So I wanted to have a place to put it over here. I could have made it external and had it on top of the hard, on top of the case or whatever, but it's just better if it's inside the case. Now this is a, a uh, uh, an open side cover so you'll be able to see what's going on on the inside even though it is plastic um, but I think it's a big upgrade from the Dell uh, the Dell is pretty cramped inside and especially with cabling uh, it doesn't have much for cable management and it's kind of a mess inside not a lot of room for air so this one will have much more room for air and spread the parts out a little bit besides it comes with uh, two fans on the inside right here and I'll mount another 120 millimeter fan up there. I can put more fans on top 
Um, yeah, this is gonna be a much better option uh, for what we're going with. Uh, the Dell, I don't know if anybody follows Dell computers and modding them. They have proprietary plugs, and these are some adapters I picked up that will allow me to use the uh, USB and such power button from the aftermarket case on the Dell. That will be these here. Here's just some fan adapter wires. Now I picked up a new CPU. Can't see much in here. It's kind of protected right now. The Dell is an i7-4770 uh, processor. And uh, it runs, I believe, at 31 gigahertz. Uh, and that's fine. It runs good. I, I think you can clock to like 36 or it has a, excuse me, they call it a turbo boost. It turbo boosts to like 36 or 3.6, I believe, gigahertz. Well, this one, i7 47090K, the K meaning that it's overclockable, even though my Dell won't allow it to overclock, I believe. But the 47090 has a base clock of 4.0 gigahertz. And it can clock up to, I believe, 4.6 on the turbo boost. So, yeah, that's that's a good processor to have. It's the highest processor that this Dell motherboard can support um, for the Intel series. The, this is an Intel board, so it's the highest processor I can put in here. I picked up a bigger fan. This was what other people were recommending as I watched videos about it. Uh, this Coolmaster fan, i70C to go on top of the 4790 and I picked up a new graphics card now it's a used card and I believe it was used for mining but hopefully the the BIOS is not messed up these cards come with two BIOS so if one of them's messed up we'll click over to the other one but this is a AMD Radeon RX 580 8 gigabyte from XFX now this is a nice card it should really work well with the Dell. Um, it's not a big step up, so I don't think there'll be bottlenecks between the processor and the and the graphics card, but this will still get me uh, better than what I have going on over here. So uh, now that we've got to look at all the parts, we need to get the Dell taken apart. So let's take a look inside this Dell and I'll show you what I'm going to take out of it to use in the new uh, fractal case. I've got Groot, my assistant, ready here. We're going to dive into this thing. So the Dells make it really easy. They've got a little release right here on the side. Top them out to come off pretty simple. Uh, you can see what I mean by looking in there for cable management. Um, there really isn't any. It's pretty, pretty, pretty messy inside. Yeah. So hopefully this new fractal case is going to help eliminate some of that. Uh, this is the fan that I added to the computer to help blow more air over for the memory and the processor and the graphics card. And uh, yeah, there's the four sticks of memory down there. There's the old CPU cooler. This is the original Dell stuff. Uh, the new 500 watt uh, processor. This is an 80 plus gold. So it's a high quality processor. I hope the 500 watt is enough. I, th I believe it is. This card, this AMD 550 card, did not need an extra power source from the power supply. It ran off the board. It's 75 watt, so it ran from the board just fine. The new one over there needs power from the power supply. So we have those cables all right here, all bunched up inside here. And uh, yeah, that's not gonna be a problem. So I think first off, um, yeah, I think first off we're going to get this fan off, this fan out, maybe the drives out, and of course the graphics card so we can get down there where we can get to the screws for the motherboard. All right. All right, let's get some of this stuff out of here. So these Dells just have a, a release here on the side. I forget how to do it. Let's see, can we get that? How do you do that? There we go. Just pop that hatch open and there's a release down here for the card. Pull the graphics card out 
Yeah, doing pretty good. I got a box, I'll put that in. You can see the fin, the, got some dust on it. Not bad, I was expecting more. With my assistant Groot around, there's a lot of hair. He sheds a lot. But this card has worked really well for what I needed to, but hopefully the new one will work even better. This, uh, let me see, let me see. I bought this card uh, during the, uh, the sh card shortage, and it's a, a Max Sun Gaming Endless Radeon RX 550, and it's worked really well. I'm very happy with the card. I just want, I just try to want to try to have a little more power, you know, a little bit, uh, a little more power, basically. I want to take a picture of the drives. Just so I get the right drive connected to the right spot. My memory is not the best nowadays. So this is the blue one. It's the primary drive. It's attached to the 240 gig hard drive or SSD drive. So uh, I just want to make sure that one's in the right spot. It's always a good idea if you don't, not sure, take some pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug these. Get them out of here. Disconnect the power. And go ahead and pull the drives out. And this is a King's Fast. This is what came with the computer. And this is the one terabyte. I'm not sure what brand this is. Oh, it's a Seagate. One terabyte Barracuda 7200 RPM drive. Nice. We'll try to put these things to where it won't get disturbed out of the way. I much prefer SSD drives. I should have bought a one terabyte SSD drive to replace the Barracuda drive, the Seagate one gigabyte drive. But uh, maybe I'll do that at a later date. Okay. Now, you know what? It might be a good idea to get the power. So, well, let's get this thing out of here first. <laughs> Look at this. This is DIY Willie stuff right here, man. This is just duct taped in. <laughs> Look at that. That's just duct taped in. Made a little box out of uh, Velveeta mac and cheese. See that? To direct airflow. And it's plugged into a... To a, I believe it's a SATA adapter to run the fan all the time when the power's on. <laughs> hey, but it worked. It brought a cool air from here across this way. It was the best way to put a fan in there, I thought. Let's see. We've got another SSD right here. Some more duct tape from my custom fan box. And this cable management. Look at this. Just tucked away up in there. That's a whole lot of cables. That's a whole lot of cables. Probably can't see much. There we go. Now to run these aftermarket power supplies on these Dell laptop or these excuse me these Dell Optiplex. You gotta have these 24 to 8 pin adapters. And uh, yeah, I forget, I picked that one up off of Amazon. And uh, right here, I picked this up off of Amazon, it worked. And uh, it allows it to use the aftermarket power supply with, uh, can't see, oh, there we go. That's the, uh, uh, this is the uh, power for the uh, the CPU, and uh, now we can get that power supply out of the way. That would be nice. I'm gonna take these extra SATA cables out. We'll have them all set aside. There we go. That's a nice one. That's a 90 degree one. We may need this one with the... Uh... So we have everything disconnected now. Uh, I think I broke my USB 3 
connector. I didn't realize, I thought I had to pull out. I didn't realize I had to push in. Um, novice mistake. So I broke the, the lock on the motherboard, but I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be fine. I've got all about eight, I guess, eight, seven or eight of the screws out of the motherboard, and it should be ready to lift on out. Oh, there is this intruder switch in the side of the case. Now we're gonna take this out. There's a few things we're gonna take out. But we're gonna take this out and I'll probably just tape it closed like that so that the board thinks that it still has it. Otherwise you will get an error on the BIOS when it starts up. Also the speaker, we'll take the speaker out and reuse that and the temperature sensor. It'll be looking for that as well when it starts back up. So we'll take that out. Let's see, you can do that right now. That just, un look, look at the dust, that just unclips like that. We'll set it aside. And the speaker, I think just also just kind of, yep, just kind of slips out. We'll reuse that too. So like I said, I believe that's everything. I already took the CD-ROM drive out, power supplies out. Now we'll just lift the motherboard. Looks nice. I'll probably uh, take it out and just dust it off, blow it out. Set it down right here. Now we need the I.O. board. I think this is called the I.O. board. This is the, uh, we need this thing. Let's see, come out of there. Somehow. <laughs> that did it. Go Willie. So we need this to put in the new, <laughs> the, the new case. So we took that out. That fits over right, right like, That'll fit over everything like this, so it all looks relatively factory, like that, right? Okay. So that's it for the Dell, the case. I mean, it'd be a good case for another computer if I decide. Th the parts for this case are really cheap. You know, the power supply, the motherboard, the smaller processors, i5, i3, even the, the processor like I have. I, I'll have the, the, 40, uh, the i7 processor. I could rebuild this computer fairly cheap and have another one standby you know but uh, that'll be at a later date what i want now is the uh the fractal case this is an older type case uh, i believe it's a few years old already made in sweden or switzerland or someplace like that so uh take these nuts off these are these are captive nuts they won't fall out you could probably take them out but they won't fall out but be careful of this case or the side cover. If you use this case, they will just drop out um, like that, kind of. I just caught it best I could. And inside, look at that. Look how clean that is. We've got the two fans. We've got our I we got our optical drives. We got the the Bluetooth. I mean not Bluetooth. The USB three right here. We got some power switch and some other things here going on. This is for the lights, the fans. Uh, this is the hard drive cages. Get these out. Looks like there's a little packet of hardware here. We got some hardware. Thank you, Fractal. Now, first, I would like to put the motherboard in. Let's just see how our motherboard lines up inside. Let's take a look at that. Make sure we got some holes. That we can mount to. Helps if you have it going the right way. Come on, Willy. Willy. Willy, Willy. Yeah. Looks like there's, yeah, it looks like it'll fit perfectly. Perfectly, look at that. It's got a little pin that it lines up on. All I gotta do is just install the standoffs and the motherboard will mount right in there. Perfect. I like that, I like that a lot. Okay, so let's get this fan off. You got, you got four screws to hold the fan on. We're just gonna evenly remove them. 
little bit on each side. You tighten them up the same way, a little bit on each side, working them down. Man, I had to turn the fan on. It's getting warm in here. It's raining outside. I've had this off before. I put new, uh, new thermal grease down there on the CPU and the fan so that it would cool better because these older PCs, you know, that stuff can get crystallized and not be conductive. Thermal paste, I should say, not thermal grease. Thermal paste. There we go. Ew, it looks like I put too much. I made a mess in there. Oh, that's not good. Don't do what I did. That was too much thermal paste. Now we'll take, normally you could use like a, like a, uh, 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 oh man, what am I trying to think of? A, uh, the damn little stick with cotton on it <laughs> to clean this up, but I don't have one. So I'm going to use a little bit of toilet paper and some ice isopro alcohol. And we'll just kind of clean this mess up. Let's see, just push this down. Oh no, there we go. Right there. You know what, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit more. I see it right there. You just slide that little arm over, release it back. That will expose or unlock the CPU. I've never had this CPU out before, but um, I used to build computers back in the day. Oh, that's good enough. Good enough. Let's get the other one out. Again, this is a i7-4770 processor. It runs at like 3.1 or 3.4 or something like that. I can look up the specs and put it in the description if you guys want. And this is an i7-4790 processor. And it runs at 4.0 base speed. So it should be quite a bit faster. This is the uh, static free thing uh, bag to keep it in. Now they include some thermal paste with it, with it, which is really nice. I'm glad they do that. This is a used processor. These processors are from uh, uh, about 2013, 2014, you know, and there it is. Look at that. I7-4790K, ready to go. Now, let's carefully get this one out. Lift it out like so. There's the bottom side. I don't know if you get to see a bottom side of a PCU much. It's actually heavier than I thought it would be. We're going to set it down right there. I see something I want to try to get off the board. Okay, now here we go with the new one. Now there's pins down here. You got to be really careful with those pins. Just kind of set it down gently. Now there's a little spot mark here and there's a, a mark right there on the chip. You want to make sure you line those up and just set them in there like that. Success. And then pull the cover down, lock it in place with the little arm. There we go. New CPU installed. That'll make it that much faster. We'll just take care of this one, keeping it nice and neat in its little container, putting it back in its static free case with its grease thank you very much set it aside wow all right took a little bit longer than i thought it was going to take but we're good now here's the new fan this is the, the larger fan than this one the, the heat sink is probably the same size if you can see but the fan is way different so we're going to pull a lot more air over everything and it is a different connector on the Dell. So it requires a pin adapter 
a five pin. I believe this is a, uh, uh, what is it? This is a three pin or no, four pin to five pin. So it requires these little adapters that I picked up off Amazon and it's got the nice cover over the wiring. So you, it'll make uh, the wiring look nice inside. And uh, this will plug in right here, just like that. And then this fan will plug into this. So yeah, we're getting there. Now on the bottom of these things, you'll see there's thermal paste already there. It's ready to go. Now these, these fans come with their own bracket that you can use. We don't need these on the Dell. The Dell motherboard has it already on the bottom. So uh, we don't need it. We'll just set it aside, put it back in the box. We'll be good to go. Now, I don't think there's any instructions. Sometimes there's a little plastic cover. I don't see any. Yeah, I don't see one. So let's just see, is it thermal paste? Yep, it's ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna set that down. I wonder if I can put it on like this. That way it manages the cable a little better. Hmm. Well, that might be a good idea. I'm gonna go ahead and set it down on top. And we'll tighten her down. Remember, you wanna tighten them down a little bit on each side, working your way around. Some people, like I was saying, some people put water coolers on these. I think that's pretty cool. Get it? Cool. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. This will be fine. These CPUs, I mean, I, I have enough air in there. You just want to tighten it up till it stops, bottoms out like you don't want to over crank it or just like that. Now the CPU and the fan cooler are one. Let's plug that bad boy in. There we go. You know what? Void if removed. Well, we'll just leave it alone. Okay, <laughs> this is really coming along guys. Take a little bit of time to sort it all out. Um, we've got the standoffs here. We've got the motherboard screws. We've got the power supply screws and the optical drive screws. Now these all came in this little box with uh, some zip ties and stuff. Nice setup for this motherboard. I've got the standoffs here. I'm gonna go ahead and install all the standoffs and uh, yeah, then we'll get ready to put the motherboard in. So I need some light. I use my GoPro light. Woohoo! Light on the subject. I might need to get a wrench for these. I don't know. I got one, two. Yep. Yeah, I probably will need to get a wrench. Make sure they get seated in there right. So they go in all the holes that line up with the uh, motherboard. And if you remember earlier, we test fit to make sure that they, they did line up and they did in fact line up. You have a center pin and then you have the holes. So we'll get these all in and uh, yeah, we'll get this thing bolted in. That makes me even more excited. How this board put in. I'm gonna go get a wrench and we can tighten all those up and we'll put the motherboard in. Okay, so we have the standoffs all tightened down. We're gonna go ahead and set the motherboard in and uh, get it fit in its slot. Just like that. Check everything. Yep, it all looks good. We've got our eight little black screws that we can put in the specific locations 
and tighten them down. This will hold the motherboard board firmly down. It also grounds with the case, I believe, is why they're like that. And the standoffs allow for uh, the backside of the motherboard to be up off of a metal surface. I just gotta say guys, I am not a professional computer builder. I've built a few computers in my time, but uh, I prefer to work on engines. These computers are fun, I enjoy it, but I am not a professional builder. So if I'm doing something wrong, hey, bring it up in the comments. Uh, something I should have done better. Hopefully it's something that won't damage any of the parts. Okay, you don't have to wrench these things down either. We're just gonna get them nice and snug. Come on, Willie. You got this, Willie. Okay. Now the motherboard and case are one. <laughs> That's stupid, right? All right, let's get this some ballast weight in this thing, put the power supply in, and then uh, we'll start hooking everything up. Okay, power supply. Da -da -da. You know what? Let's stand it up because we're going to shoot the cables out this side. This case has a path here and uh, will hide a lot of the cables on this side of the case. Um, there's little windows. They're nice and smooth, so they shouldn't cut the wires. You see that? Nice and smooth. Uh, the SSD drive can go right here. It may be able to go up here too as well, but it kind of hides it back here behind everything. So uh, we may take a look at that, doing that that way, and putting the other two drives in the drive bays. Um, but yeah, let's get the power supply. Now this is not a modular power supply. This is just a regular power. It's a good one because it's a 500 uh, gold, but uh, yeah, see it's 80 plus gold. It's a good power supply, but a modular one, all these cables, would plug in and, and be able to remove them to better uh, get rid use only the cables you want or need and get rid of some of the excess that you don't need and uh, uh, allow for less clutter inside the case and, and better cable management but I cheaped out on it I, I opted for this type of power supply that it's not modular I could have spent a few bucks more I got a modular one but I mean hey this is good it'll work so uh, we're gonna we're gonna put this in like so. Get the cables through there. There's a lot of them. Some other board power. Get in there. This is your new home. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You're gonna like it. You're gonna be able to breathe. Cable management. Come on now. Cable management. Remember, I didn't have any cable management in the other case. Okay, now that that's fed through there, we'll just pull them through like so. Slip the power supply. Now, another thing I should mention it's got feed on the bottom. And uh, it's got a filter on the bottom, kind of hard to see. So the power supply is going to draw air from the bottom. Or push air out, I don't know which. I think it draws it. And uh, we'll have that pointed down. So, uh, yeah, that looks really nice. Check it out. Woohoo! Uh, nice. So we got some power supply screws here. We got black ones. Make it look aesthetically nice. We'll go ahead and just screw them in. Come on, Willie. Don't tighten them up though until they're all four in. Then we can get the holes lined up. Just get them good and started. Good and started. My helper's taking a nap. He's out. He did a lot of the hard work already. So, let me see. Now I got all these in. 
I'll tighten them down. Come on, Willie. Isn't it almost lunchtime? I'm hungry. Here we go, upgrading the Dell Optiplex. We're gonna make it faster. We have the ability, the knowledge, the technology to make it bigger, make it better, make it faster. Wah, wah, wah. Anybody guess what that's from? Something like that. I know it doesn't go exactly like that, but something like that. Wow, look at all that. Okay, so let's get our optical drive in. Our CD-ROM drive. I believe they show just pulling up on the front. Yep. Like so. It's a nice shot. It has a filter inside. Really nice look. So there we go. We'll be able to keep the dog hair out and the dust. Looks like you just squeeze these little tabs over. Yep. Squeeze the little tabs over and pop the drive bay blank out without breaking it. Let me use a screwdriver. There we go. Now the drive door's out. We're building a computer! I'm not necessarily building it. We're upgrading. There's our drive. I like that it's black. It'll go nice in there. Um, I think I have to take the screws out. I think, I think, I think, I think. To put it in here. Oh! Really, really. You guys hear Spikey? Spikey's going nuts over there. I don't know why he's just singing away. Like, really, Spikey? Gotta make that much noise. Why can't you be like Rudy? Just sleep. Okay. I know Groot would rather be going for a walk right now instead of sleeping, but oh well. It just slips in so like that. Da da dum 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 I just want to see how far to have it so that it pokes out of the case. Right there is nice. It's going to be nice and flush with the case. So, how it says these screws here are for the drive. Now where do we go next? What would be the next way for best cable management? What would be the next thing to run? The OptiDrive, the, uh, the SATA cables, the power, case power cables, what would be the next thing to go? Hmm, I don't know, let me figure it out. So I just started to, so I decided to start plugging in the uh, cables that came with the motherboard for the power switch and stuff like that. I've already plugged in the USB the 3, the USB 3, that's the blue one, the big one right here. Uh, this will be the uh, HD audio. And then I have over here, I have the USB for the front. This is the regular 2.0 USB. And I have the uh, power switch, reset switch, the hard drive light, and the power LED light. Now the power switch is going to have to go up to the top up on this side of the board so I'm gonna to have to separate those from the ribbon uh, the reset switch well this motherboard doesn't have one on the Dell and the power LED will go up here to the top as well and the hard drive light stays here so I'm gonna to have to separate these two carefully remove them you know what I should just do it from this way remove those this is the power power switch. Pull that back. So I have that for the top. Like so. And then we need the power LED to go up to the top. To the top of the world. Go Willie. 
Bum, 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 bum. So we separate those. Now those are at the top. And we can put this one back inside. So we're really trying for cable management here. I don't know, which was that one? Oh, that's the, the audio one. Okay, so now, come around again to this side. Let's do the bottom one. That's the big one. So if you look, to install this, you see the white? It's got the little notch right there. Well, that kind of matches the configuration of this uh, socket. I'll call it a socket or plug. So what you want to do is see there's an opening right there, a space. You want to line that, that gap right there with, with that. And they just sit in there. And they just sit in there like so there we go no oh, broken nail so we've got our usb or this is oh excuse me this is our audio and you see it's got two one and then six here we have the same thing two one and then six so we just line up that missing pin and plug it in don't make these cables too tight because that will uh, put a lot of stress on the pins and you can damage them. Does that look about right? Oh, I wish there was a... I wish there was a... Uh, a screw there on that side of the motherboard, but there's not. So what do we have left? We have... Oh, the reset switch we're not going to use. I should pull that one back too, actually. No way we get it out of there. We have the hard drive light. Positive and negative. I want to make sure you get the polarities right. You'll see the board has a positive and negative on it. Just line up those polarities. Center home. Gently. Push them down. That that little motherboard adapter board does not lock in, so it will come out. Make sure it doesn't come out. Okay, then we have our USB 2. And uh, it's got six and then one, so it's got one missing pin. And we'll line up that missing pin. So it looks like the USB will be facing, the lettering will be facing the top. Correct? Yes. Absolutely correct. You got it, Willie. You got it. Make sure they're seated all the way. And make sure the adapter's seated. You see how it pushes down on the motherboard? That's kind of scary. All right. Now we got this one. This is for the power switch and the hard drive light. I mean, excuse me, the power of the LED. So that one will go up there. And uh, there's a certain way you do this one too. And it lines up, see there's an arrow. There's, a, there's an arrow right there. And that lines up with the missing pin, I believe. Yeah. That is, there's, in the instructions, there's five pins. And if the missing pin is on the top, then it goes with the arrow facing the front of the computer. If the missing pin is on the bottom, then it goes reverse with the arrow facing the back of the computer. Ours, however, is gonna face towards the front of the computer. Our missing spot, our missing pin is on the top. So I might take the time to plug this in first to here maybe before I plug it in there let me see this is what I get this one and this one which one is which one okay so on the power switch it says negative and then there's a little 
arrow. I'm assuming the arrow is positive. So on here, we have, for the power switch, it's really hard to see. Positive on this side, negative on that side. Really hard to see. But we just plug it in like that. For the other one, it's got the power LED has positive and negative. So it'll go positive on this side and negative on that side. Make sure they're seated down all the way and we'll send it to the case. I'm gonna send it right, I'm gonna send it right through the top. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna send it right through the top. I'm trying to keep all my wires together. And then we'll plug it in. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Very, very nice. Very nice. Again, don't pull the wires very tight. You don't want to put a lot of stress on the motherboard. But we are just going to do it just like that. Okay. Now, let's read the motherboard power. Let's get this hardware out of the way. We don't need this hardware anymore. The more stuff we have out, the better. We'll put it in its perspective bags later. Get it out of the way. So, I want the motherboard power first. I've got to deal with this monster cable somehow. That'll come out the top one. So we'll go ahead and feed this one in the top one. Like so. And that is our 8-pin power connector. And it's got a lock and it coincides. It's also got a different shape. You got square ones, you got round ones, they only fit one way. Plug that in. Looking good, Willie. Got that. We gotta manage all this somehow. If it had another spot right here that would block us, you could hide all the wires right through. That would really be nice. Because it doesn't give you much room down here to be putting wires. But we'll, we'll figure it out. It's gonna be a lot better than the Dell was anyway. So let's get the power for the CD-ROM drive. That would be one of these. This is for the graphics card. Or is this one for the graphics card? I don't know, that's CPU. Hey, that'd be a good one to plug in right now. Yeah. That would be a good one to plug in right now. We'll run it up. Now it gives you two types, I believe, and you just gotta use the right type. Or is there two? No, one's round, one's square. Yeah, so we just have to figure out which one we are. Let's see. We'll send it through the top over here. And we are round and square. That would be this one. Yeah, this one. There we go. Snapped right in. I'll leave that one just hanging, hanging out, hanging out. That's to go to work. Okay, so we have the main power, we have the board power, we have this is for the graphics card. Let's see, we're gonna shoot that back through. All right, so check it out. I got it all together. 
every bit of it is inside I need to get a bigger fan for the exhaust fan I've got two 120 fans coming in and I don't know what size this is, this is a smaller fan to pull air out but I have plenty of vent on top of the case so uh, yeah I should do pretty good for what I'm gonna use it for uh, don't look at my cable management my cable management sucks I need to get a modular power supply so I don't have to have all of this I can just plug in the cables that I need and then I could get rid of this what they call ketchup and mustard stuff that's in the back uh, right now this is powering my two drives from the motherboard I believe I can run it just from the power supply but I didn't want all those cables behind there um, yeah back panels on now I'm gonna put the front panel on and it's time to uh, take it and plug it in you know it looks pretty good I like how it looks it's a nice DIY Willy project it should really help uh, my video editing with this new PC well it's not new but it's a new case and a new graphics card a new heat sink and new processor I forgot about the processor 4790k should do pretty good um yeah that's everything the only thing we didn't put back in was the uh, intruder alert the tutor switch whatever this is called intruder temper switch whatever it goes on the case I didn't put it back in I, I read I don't need it so uh yeah let's get this case back on some lint inside <laughs> no, there's a couple pieces of lint inside there it is with the case side cover on looks pretty good trying not to get the glare from the light looks pretty good let's go turn it on go hook it up look at the difference in the cases quite a bit different yeah look how much taller this one is where there's so much more room in it even the overall look at that the overall size difference very nice very 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 nice <clears throat> all right looking good there it is guys it's running check it out Fans are on. Everything's looking good. Screens are working. I've got that DIY Willy guy up there. Yeah, dual monitors. So when I first turned it on, well, let me explain. I've got the side cover off because when I first turned it on, it did it wasn't working. And uh, I booted into BIOS, and I was able to reset everything for the new processor. And it saw the card and it saw the processor. When I exited out of BIOS and rebooted the system, it did not come in. I had a black screen. So I took the graphics card out and I put in my uh, RX 550 and it worked. So there was nothing wrong with the computer. It was the graphics card. Now these AMD cards come with a dual BIOS switch and uh, you can flip the switch and go to a fresh BIOS on it. So uh, that's what I did. I pulled the card out, I flipped the switch, I reinstalled the card, and uh, turned it on, and voila! I have Willy. Willy's on the screen. Seems to be working pretty fast. I'll leave a link in the description of the one that I bought. I like it. This is a video so, uh, I was working on. Let's take a look at what I've done so far. So, uh, looks like it's going to work pretty good. And I got some bright lights behind me. The first thing we did so, uh, was get to the yeah. I like it. It looks good. Both monitors are on. Got my DIY Willy workstation. 
well that's it the computer works the upgrade worked perfect and uh yeah give it a thumbs up if you liked it uh, this computer content i know this is not normally what i do on my channel but i needed to do it and uh it took it took a day and a half to get everything transferred and get it working again so uh leave a comment below if there's something you saw i might have i might should have done different um on the computer uh let me know and uh Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by and checking out my videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Alright, bye.